Hello guys, welcome back. So today I'm testing the MiFine Pro Aircast, a rod that is rated from 0.2 to 0.8 grams and in here I have a 0.75 shab weight and look. One hand. Amazing. Whoa! What the hell? Today I'm testing a MiFine prototype. This is the MiFine Pro Aircast. Uh, the river, it's flooded. It's flooded conditions. So that's why I'm fishing very, very parallel to the bank because this is a 0 0.2 to 0 0.8 gram rod is very, very thin and I don't want to be catching all the crap that is coming down the river. We have a lot of leaves because it's fall and it's very annoying to constantly being uh, grabbing leaves on your line or on your hook. I'm fishing with a high jig by TG Elite and I paired it with a silver feather because it's until now the, the only reel that I can consistently cast sub one gram. Yes, so I already caught a fish while I was scouting the area. Um, good thing it's while I was doing my scouting before I start uh, recording for real other than catching a fish I also put on a small crankbait and the fish was were starting to following it so good you see a bite they are all on this small I would call it base but I cannot see them because the water is very very stained my I'm using the super continent soft plastic the small one and is getting cooked at least the tail end the hook on this on this guy is very very small so uh, you need a bigger fish to fully engulf the the soft plastic and get hooked maybe i will change the soft plastic i'm using a very very bright color now it's starting to rain which can be a good thing, can be a bad thing. For me, it's a bad thing. Maybe for fishing is a good thing. But either way, I will try to catch some more fish. The casting, it's actually pretty good on this rod. I think it's better than the... Oh, strike. It's better than the illusion. It's a more refined rod. It has the proper guides. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten guides, counting the the tip. But it feels snappier than the illusion. The grip it's a bit more comfortable. Oh, another strike. And I snagged. Let's try to not. Whoa! Whoop! Yep. Try to not do this. And now, how do I get from here? Jesus. Ah, crap. Maybe this is the last time you see me. Oh, everywhere it's slippery. It's, uh, Jesus. <sighs> so here is not a good place. Let's try under these shades. There's wood in here. where the I was thinking the river was not so flooded maybe the dam overhead it's getting fuller because they didn't discharge 
so much water this summer and they are discharging the water and that's what made the the river go so high <coughs> because the creek is not that high so let's see if I lot of bites not a lot of fishes Maybe I should I will cut a little bit of my soft plastic so the the the, the magic part of this soft plastic is the tail and I need the tail a little bit closer to the hook strike 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 So this is a spot where I caught the fish. Over there we have a lot of sunfish. But I really don't want to put my lure very further off the bank because one it will snag and I will not be able to retrieve it and the ice jigs are 30 cents each. Uh, And will annoy me and also I don't think there's a lot of fish now in the middle they are probably all hidden on this small base on the bank get away from the current and take a break I think it's time to change locations see you guys in a bit And now I really have to go on the water. So I took advantage and I went up and down the creek until I stumbled upon a very, very, very weird thing. What the hell? I found a pot, aluminium pot. Out of the water, yoink! I think it's the weirdest thing I found on the water until now. Sucking so much today again. Can I pass through here? Wait. Whoops. I think I may bit a bit more than I can chew, but let's try it. Ooh, it's getting deeper. Yep, I think here. So. Yes.
Byte. Byte. Suspected. So it was worth it. Yes. It was actually easier than I, it should be, which is not a bad thing. Because I had to grab my forceps from the backpack. It was good. So, two fishes. Oh, bite. Another one. And this was the last fellow after this, people started to call me, I had bird's nest because I was hitting the branches with my lure, everything was going bad, so I went up the creek, out of the creek, and decided to call it a day. So, this is the end of the session, and today I had a blast with uh, me fine Erkes. Sorry for you to being against the sun, but look at this. Wank. Amazing. Such an amazing rod. Hopefully this will go from prototype to finished product soon. Because this is a very very cool rod. It's I think the best rod that I experimented with sub one gram because I'm throwing. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, 0.75 chab weight on the here with a very very small plastic and a knee hook. Either way, man, this is look silver feather, amazing. The me find aircast, amazing. A lot better than the illusion slash for uh, lure fishing. So, amazing, amazing rod. I'm very, very happy with it. I'll be putting more hours. This is me putting more hours on it. I decided to go for a short trip after mullet. And you can see in here that the line is passing the blank to the first guide. Already contact me fine, because if you are going after big fish, you will have this problem. I think the rod needs one or two more guides to be perfect. So this is a three part rod and the first part where you have the real seat doesn't have any guide. So I already gave my input. But most importantly, even if this rod will not go to production, I will keep my prototype and I will be putting s uh, the two guides that I think are missing for heavier fishing. Again. If you are fishing for small things, like I, I am most of the time in the, my creek going after chub, you will have no problems. But if you are like me, a Dumbass, and go with this kind of setup after mullet, like I did in here, where I it peeled a lot of drag for my silver feather, eh, you will be a little bit... Uh, how do I call it? Surprised when you see your line going like... Three, four fingers after your blank, as you can see in here. It's very, very, very hard. I will, if you want, and leave a comment below if you want it. I can explain how I target 
uh, mullet with BFS. It's actually very easy. It's even easier with the super ultralight because it's uh, on the drift of uh, white soft plastic. So it, it would be easier with a super ultralight because then you can go like sub half a gram and then it will be very, very easier to target them. Unfortunately, the first one that I caught was snagged even though it, I think it hooked itself. I just felt uh, probably one was nibbling the the soft plastic, and this one passed by because they go on a group, and I snag it uh, on the on the I would say on the side. I will just go there and release it, but you will be seeing the soft plastic that I'm using. So very 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 simple presentation this one was caught uh, with a super continent um, two millimeter uh, I still don't know how, how they call it but it's the one that looks like a small fish with a ball on the tail end uh, I need to go with the forceps fortunately mullets are very very hardy fish uh, and it will swim away with no problems they will survive even nuclear explosions then and there he goes here is my soft plastic now this one i was not filming i was saving my sd card for other things but i just turned it on this one it was caught properly with a tanta it's a bit smaller but as you will see still put up a good fight i think i missed 10 seconds i missed the hook set um but still amazing that i was able to deal with it no problems don't get me wrong the line going through the blank didn't cause me any problem but it's annoying i would prefer to have their guides it's not that this rod doesn't have enough guides because it has like 10. Uh, i think it it it's uh, such a nice blank for this type of thing going like one and under one gram that I, I will go through the effort of putting the two additional guides. So in here I just push the fish to shore on the on that humid grassy place and I will take the the lure out of his mouth. They are very annoying because they flip flop a lot they are very very slimy they smell very very bad but either way i will have to take the lure out of his mouth and let it go about his life so you will notice that as soon as i will take the hook out of his mouth it will just flop his way to the water it's always like this with mullet and there it goes again swimming away with his buddies but back to the past either way i'm very happy with the um with the rod but until my next video i will see you guys next time bye